Oh, look. It's the Nikon F3. A Nikon F3 HP, as a matter of fact. That's not really gonna affect anything we're gonna do with the light seals, but just so you know, this has that HP, the high point viewfinder. These are modular viewfinders that the HP came with, and you can switch them out. So yours may look a little bit different than this, but as long as it's an F3, you're gonna be just fine. Oh, I'm all at it. Just beautiful 85 millimeter F14. Mm. All right, so down to business. Replacing the light seals more or less permanently on the Nikon or Nikon, depending on how internationally pretentious you want to be. Replacing the light seals on the Nikon F3. Now, like a lot of cameras, especially from this era, these came with some foam rubber light seals and over time that degrades especially the adhesive it gets hard and it just uh, ceases to be a light seal I'd actually figured out or had the idea anyway of uh, doing this type of light seals from taking a look at the light seals on my Zorky 4k it was a Soviet 35 millimeter rangefinder and instead of the foam light seals it had string in there. So I got the idea to use some yarn. Then as it turned out, I was researching it some. I am definitely not the first person to have this idea. There's quite a few videos on YouTube replacing these light seals with something more permanent. And uh, speaking of, I've already done this with my Olympus OM-1N, that video of the restoration. You can see it being done here, but I wanted to go in and give a more detailed explanation and how to on replacing the light seals on some of these 35 millimeter uh, SLR cameras. All right, Nikon F3. Five total light seals on here, but you're probably only going to have to replace maybe two or three of them. And I'll show you why here in just a second. But you have two in the back. Turn this around. I'm just going to take the door off for simplicity. It's got a little latch here. You have two going around the top channel and the bottom channel here. These are completely gone. I should be ashamed of myself for letting it uh, get to this point. Uh, those will definitely usually need to be replaced. That's what wears out the most because it gets the most articulation. Those are foam rubber. There's also one here on the door, the door hinge. It's black, so you probably can't see it. That one is actually made of felt. And believe it or not, we're gonna be using some felt to replace some of these other seals, but go figure the felt one probably won't need to be replaced but just have a look and that won't be a big deal to replace either but in my case i'm not going to be replacing that door seal now the other two seals take the lens off the other two seals are going to be a little more difficult to get to but not that difficult we're definitely going to be replacing this mirror cushion right here. Again, mine is completely hardened, completely gone. And the other one that we're not going to replace is back here. It's another mirror bump stop. It's right there on the back hinge of the mirror. It's hard to see uh, without taking the viewfinder off. Um, you know what, let's be thorough. Let's just go ahead and take that off so I can show it to you. Be really careful with that one. And another great feature of the F3 is that it has easily removable focusing screens. But of course, be super, super, super careful with that guy. Easy peasy. So I don't know if you'll be able to see this well or not. But the seal is right here. Where can I go? Where can I go? Yeah, right here. But in my case, thankfully, I don't know if this one has been replaced for whatever weird reason before, it's actually looking pretty good. So we're not gonna worry with that one. Get everything put back together here. <laughs> now you know how to remove a focusing screen from an Nikon F3. Learning all kinds of stuff today, folks. Okay. So, in short, we're only going to be replacing the top and bottom hinge seals, excuse me, the uh, channel seals, and that mirror cushion right there at the top. So how we're going to do this, uh, first we're going to really need to, I'm going to put the lens back on, just so it's kind of got a working platform here. Uh, what we got to do, and even though I don't have very much left in here, we've got to get this old foam rubber out first. 
because we're going to be replacing it with this standard issue cotton yarn. Yeah, yarn. The best thing I found to get this old foam rubber out, I think in my case, like it's very sticky uh, with age. In my case, I probably won't have to use it, but I'm going to anyway, just to kind of really be thorough on the cleaning. And that is this 99% uh, isopropyl alcohol. Uh, you don't have to use the 99% all the time, but the more pure that you can get, the better, because it's going to evaporate more fully and won't leave any residue on your camera. That could be a little hard to find. You could probably find it at a drugstore. I actually had to get this off of Amazon, believe it or not. And the other thing is a Q-tip to apply the alcohol. And in, uh, well, in our case here, there's going to be a burn off end of a stick of incense because I'm classy. Really, you just want something to scrape that out that's not going to damage up your paint, at least as little as possible. And one more little thing that I like to do, folks, this is just me being extremely paranoid. When I have the back off my cameras like this, especially any camera with a cloth shutter, cutting sh uh, curtain shutter, I put a little bit of painter's tape. Be really careful with this, don't actually touch it to the shutter. But I put a little bit of painter's tape just lightly over that, especially in our case working with this alcohol so I don't drop any alcohol down onto that shutter and cause everybody to have a bad day. Get out of the way of the actual channel. There we go. I said, be careful not touching the middle and actually stick it to the shutter because that's not going to be very good either. First things first, get some alcohol. Isn't that how it goes? Get some dabs on the Q tip and just press it down inside of the channel to saturate it. You might actually have to flatten that Q-tip with a pair of pliers just a little bit. There we go. To make it fit down in your channel. I'm going to speed this up too, guys, just for time's sake. There's already a good bit of that stuff just coming off on the Q-tip just from doing that. So I'm going to let that set for just a second. And then we're going to get our little incense tool here and scrape that out. So the alcohol has been working for a couple minutes now. I'm just going to go through the channels with our stick and scrape out that old gunky, that old gunky foam. Oh yeah. And there it comes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nobody needs that in their life. Just want everybody to know I just flicked that piece of foam onto my face. Kind of a final f you from the light seals here. You see what I mean by covering that up? I mean, this stuff just can get everywhere. All right, I'm gonna speed up again and clean out this other channel. All right, so those channels, top and bottom, are fairly well clean, uh, scraped out at least. I'm gonna run one more wash of our alcohol into those channels to kind of clean out any residual foam. There we go. Goody gumdrops. All right. We'll do this other channel real fast, and we'll get to the actual easy part, which is going to be replacing the seal with that yarn. Yeah, no joke. This is the hardest part, or the more uh, tedious part of the process. All right. Go ahead and take our tape off. Oh. A little bit of that foam rubber stuck right there. There we go. Awesome. Help that along with the evaporation. 
And the great thing about what we're going to do with this yarn, folks, is that we don't have to use any adhesive. That's what makes these a lot more permanent, if not totally permanent, than the foam rubber seals. It's not going to degrade over time. As I said, I'm not the first person to come up with this. And uh, the only thing that I'm going on when I tell you this next part is that this is what everyone else was doing. This is just standard 100% cotton yarn. I don't necessarily know if you couldn't use like a poly blend, like an acrylic yarn. I actually saw some made out of, I think, bamboo and silk, but yeah. Anyway, everybody was using this cotton yarn, so that's what I've been using. That's what I used on that Olympus, and it's worked great. The uh, sizing on this, I think this is a three and a half ounce, 100% cotton. No idea, folks, if you're actually someone who knits and know what you're talking about when it comes to yarn, feel free to chime in to tell me about how the gauges of this yarn work as far as sizes. But I have measured it in the Nikon F3. It fits perfect. It fits in the channels of the OM1N Olympus, and it fits perfect in the Canon AE1 program, so the Canon AE1 as well. But all we're going to do is start, I'm going to start at the bottom one here because it's the least well, they're not complicated, but it's the least uh, finicky. Let's call it that. Going to go all the way over here. You can use uh, the same, like I use that incense stick, or you can use a toothpick to press this down in here. I just happen to have one of these super cheap little dental tools that I use on a lot of my cameras, so I'm going to use that to help it along into this track. Make sure we're good. I'm actually going to trim this end just a little bit. You see how it's fraying? From the last uh, cut try to make that as sharp as possible so it'll fit down on that track a little bit better there we go again a little dental tool you can use a toothpick or anything we're just going to push that down in that track make sure it goes all the way down to the edge and we're just going to feed it across be gentle that you don't pull but keep a little bit of tension and work from one side to the other. And there we go. Bottom seal is done. Really carefully, I'm going to pick it up just a little bit and do a quick snip. Now if it's too long or too short, that's a little bit too long. I'm going to pick it up just a little bit. And give it another snip. All right. Perfect. So we're going to do the same thing to the top channel that we did to the bottom. So now we've got to the part to where you need to pay a little attention to something. There is a button, so if I can pick this up without totally messing up our yarn. There's a little tiny button that sits right here in this top track. That is your frame counter reset. So essentially when the door shuts, it pushes that in and when you open it again, it um, releases it. And I think that's what resets the counter on the F3. I don't think it's the um, spool release here. That's beside the point. You know how I ramble. But that is something you would have to watch out for. I think you could actually just lay the yarn over that, not have to worry about it. Uh, of course, you could cut it and make two small, a little small piece to go on the end here. But what I'm going to do is just go ahead and push this yarn over that. And then I'm going to show you what I'm going to do about it. Go ahead and snip this off. All right, now what I'm going to do, you can do this with any kind of tool. I'm going to use this little dental tool, but just kind of go along. You can find that. There it is. You can kind of push on it. I'm just going to kind of move these fibers over just enough to allow that little button to peek through a little bit. Like I said, I think it would actually be okay just to leave it as is. I'm just going to give it a little bit of room so when the door shuts, it's going to kind of 
separate those fibers a little bit more, make a better seal around that button. And I think that's gonna be perfect. Let's put the door back on. And one thing you'll notice too, if you just get a camera, like you get a older vintage camera off of eBay, especially an SLR camera that has a hinged back, the back can be a little, like there's some play in the back. It would almost as if it's popping when you push it. And that's because there's no pressure, there's no seal in those um, light seals anymore. And that can actually cause some feed issues with your film, especially with your pressure plate, if that spring may be a little tired too. So this is gonna help, uh, could even solve some of your uh, film feed problems. Maybe, hopefully. But anyway, I digress as usual. All right, doors on. Give it one quick look around here. And so just to be sure all this is tucked in and there's not any little fuzzies hanging out there. The sharper your scissors, the better. Of course, mine are really not sharp. I think I gave like 50 cents for them 300 years ago. So there's better scissors out there, but these work just fine. The main thing is try not to fray the ends of the yarn as best as you can. All right, close. Brilliant. Oh man, that is so much, so much better. I can't even tell you. Just a word on the yarn here, guys. Uh, this is $3.79 US. I got this from a local craft store, Hobby Lobby. That's what I recommend you doing, not necessarily from Hobby Lobby, but there's no need to order all this stuff online. You can find it. Unless you just live in an absolute middle of nowhere place, you have no stores or anything like that, but somehow you have the internet. For that reason, for that reason only, I am going to link to this stuff on uh, Amazon, just in case for whatever reason you can't find it locally. But like I said, go to Walmart, anywhere else uh, that sells virtually any kind of general store. And you can probably find this yarn, and you can probably find the other thing we're gonna use, this self adhering felt this is what we're going to use for the mirror cushion just like the um, hinge seal here in the camera this is made out of a cotton felt and just like that hinge seal again you saw how that didn't degrade this really shouldn't degrade either so it's going to be like the yarn this is going to make more or less a permanent cushion for the mirror here in the f3 now for this part you really do need to be careful about that mirror take our lens back off You need to be really careful about the mirror uh, because, of course, I've never tried it. I'm not going to try it. I have heard that alcohol, depending on the type of mirror in the camera, a lot of these are coated. I've heard that it can strip that coating off the mirror if you drop anything, you know, any of the alcohol on there. So be really careful there. The same way for the focusing screen. Be really careful with that. I am going to leave these in. You watched me take them off earlier, but um, I'm gonna leave them in and be really careful. But what I really suggest you do is take your camera and hold it upside down. I wouldn't hold it like this and then put your alcohol on there and scrape that off because a lot of that's gonna fall on the mirror. Just hold them upside down. Yeah, just like that. So I'm going to scrape off the uh, old foam rubber here. This stuff is really hard, really gunky and um, then we'll put the felt on there. You know what guys, uh, like I said, I am Jedi level paranoid about stuff. I was just looking at this. I went ahead and put the alcohol on there, but before I get to scraping around and get all that stuff, I am, a matter of fact, um, I, I am going to take the focus screen and the uh, viewfinder back off this guy. At least my baby. So that's gone. And again, it's such an easier job with the F3 to have these self-contained screens. No problem at all. So that's another reason why I'm going ahead and taking that focusing screen out. So there you go. Let that set just another minute. May give it another dab of alcohol since we're really not worried about that focusing screen anymore. Yeah, I think I'll even go as far as to say, just go ahead and take that focusing screen out. Cause now I can really, really saturate this down without really worrying about 
damaging anything. That's actually almost got all that stuff off of there just with a Q-tip. All right. Where is my incense scraper? There you are, beautiful. And let's just start scraping this stuff off. This cushion was so far gone that it's virtually non-existent. Again, shame on me. Just while I'm doing this, I'll opine on the Nikon F3 in general. I've never shot a Leica, so I can't directly comment on this compared to a Leica. But then again, I've never hunted rhino and buck swana either. So I don't miss it. And I think that's how I approach the idea of the Leicas versus the F3s. Because uh, the reason why a lot of people draw parallels to them, you notice the brassing on this? These are holy brass bodies. I think the little grips here, the little shims are made of aluminum or magnesium. But they're built like tanks, very similar to the Leicas. The actions are very similar, at least from what I've, I've seen or I've learned. And uh, well, these used to be uh, insanely cheap, uh, especially compared to the Leicas, which I don't have to tell you how much uh, that engineering sells for. Believe it or not, my dad, long story behind this camera, and I've thought about even doing a little videos talking about the cameras and their histories, at least the ones that I have and how I came into uh, my possession. A lot of them are some really weird stories. But anyway, my dad got this at a pawn shop with some more things. I don't think I could even drive yet. Actually, I know I couldn't. I think maybe he gave $10 for this HP body. And uh, that included the body, a camera bag, like some flashes and uh, some more things in there. But that 85... 85 millimeter f14 ais that was on the camera when we started that was included and a 50 millimeter f18 ais that was included so you know the universe smiles on you sometime but you can get these uh still you know relatively cheap the f3 that is it may be overkill for some situations, but it has virtually every every feature, semi-professional and otherwise, that you would likely want on a film SLR. It has the timer, has the internal meter, which you have to watch out for when you're buying because those are usually the, one of the first things to go, the LEDs in the uh, displays of the meter. And it has uh, a viewfinder, well, I'll have to show it when I get the viewfinder, but it's got the viewfinder cover on there for long exposures. It takes a motor drive, goes all the way up to one two thousandth of a second. I feel like I'm trying to sell you a Nikon F3, but I, I promise I'm not. Well, let me rephrase. Uh, you can't have mine. <laughs> you can buy your own. But anyway. Oh, and uh, while I'm here, I think we finally got that, uh, that old seal off of there. That was really, really, really tough. I'm just going to go around the bayonet. Clean a little bit of that up. Again, just a little bit of house cleaning while we happen to be in here. Beauty. All right, so uh, let's give this a nice little blow out here. And get our felt. I'm gonna do something very technical when I'm measuring this out, and it's called eyeballing it. <clears throat> but I will say, uh, I won't be as crass as to say it doesn't matter with accuracy here. But if you'll look, try to get it orientated correctly for you. The corners here in the mirror box, it is actually rectangular, but there's a little hang down Another technical term, a little corner piece here. The seal should actually extend past that. So it's a long rectangular strip. 
same thing on the other side. So when you measure this, more or less measure it from this bottom portion, because that's the same, same size as the top portion, but it doesn't have that little lip. So it'll give you a little bit better, uh, better idea of how long you need your felt to be. And always, you know, you can trim some off, but you can't uh, put any back on. So if anything, kind of make it longer than you need it. And then um, you can adjust it from there. I don't know, do you want to see me cutting this felt? <laughs> it's as exciting as you'd think it would be. All right, here is our new or soon to be new mirror cushion made out of cotton felt self-adhering trim up our little fuzzy here and what you want to do you don't need a pair of tweezers i'm going to use one um, you can't put this in here with your hands but i want to kind of do a test fit before i put the or excuse me before i remove the backing paper here See how she goes. I think I'm going to trim off a little bit from the end here. And this is kind of, uh, if you have an X-Acto knife with a cutting pad, this would be probably the time to use it. But I'm going to trim this a little bit to make it more narrow. Almost went in the camera, but that's okay. All right, I think that's going to be perfect. Tweezers, tweezers, tweezers. My kingdom for my tweezers. All right. So, get this started. Take this backing paper off. My big sausage fingers here. Okay. Now, you can leave some of this on partially and just kind of feed it on there, but since so we've got all this felt, <laughs> um, I'm going to take a chance on you know, messing up the adhesive, we can always just cut another one. So, carefully hold this like that. Flip the camera over, and we're just gonna lay them in, like so. And guys, I know I did that really, really fast, and you think, oh man, Adam really knows what he's doing. I have never in my life had one of those go in so easy and so effortlessly, effortlessly as I did just then. But yeah, I'll take it and doing it on camera. Why not? So that is tucked in there. I don't mind saying cut is perfect. You're welcome. And that's an instant. instant permanent mirror cushion for the F3. Yeah. Nice. That mirror is definitely going to thank me. All right. And you can do this if you want to. You can see where the adhesive, it kind of uh, degraded the paint just a little bit. I just happened to have a black Sharpie laying here by me. No joke, I didn't bring it in for this. You said you don't have to, but I'm just going to touch that up with a black Sharpie. Completely optional. Do what you want to do, as Marco White would say. Yeah. There you go. The illusion of professionalism. All right, folks, um, 
hate to tell you this, but we are done. Like I said, the I'm lucking out here because there's a mirror cushion back there on the mirror hinge. It would probably be a little more difficult to get to. You can see it really well. Probably not on camera. You can see it really well. But again, with cleaning out that gunk, I would really be worried about the mirror. So we'll just burn that bridge when we get there. So we'll just put everything back on. Give this focusing screen a little brush off. And he goes, are you in there? Yeah, whatever reason is, I don't know, looked a little off. Viewfinder back on. And what do you know? A nice, happy, freshly sealed Nikon F3 HP. Probably the last time, let's hope anyway, that those seals will ever have to be replaced. So there you have it, permanent like seals. This works for virtually any other uh, film SLR, or really any other film camera for that matter. But uh, to make a permanent light seal, so you don't have to worry about those rubber foam, foam rubber light seals, whatever you'd like to call them, going bad on you. Literally a generational thing. I don't know why more cameras don't have this in there, like that Soviet Zorky 4K. But this makes, uh, let's say I did the OM-1N with this as an experiment. This is my Nikon F3. We've got that one done. And then on the next video, I'm going to show you how to replace the uh, light seals in the same way on the Canon AE-1 program. Oh, one more thing. I want to give you a final tally on the price of all this. The felt, again from Hobby Lobby, a local craft store, $2.49, $2.49 US. That yarn, I think I mentioned this. The yarn was uh, $3.79, I think. Yeah, $3.79 for the yarn. And uh, real foam rubber light seals for these cameras really aren't that high. There's actually, I know a place that sells them under $10. You can also get them on eBay. But uh, why pay that, honestly, in my opinion, for something that's just going to break down on you again? Less than $4 for the yarn. This is 180 yards. So you saw how long we use there. So that's, you know, like maybe six inches each. So that's maybe not even a foot of yarn. This will last a lifetime. Uh, the same thing for the felt. This is two or three camera worth of felt that I've already used this on. This is two sheets, self-adhering, under $3. Well under $10, even with tax. Yeah, so we'll call it under $10 light seals. All right, guys, uh, I'll shut up about it now. Let me know if you have any questions about this. I'll do my best to answer them. And until next time, you know, I, uh, well, can't end these videos.